jet clipper high over the Pacific. And you feel the anticipation in the air. For always there's the thrill of the flight and the excitement of nearing a new horizon. And there it is. Suddenly, out of the vast Pacific, rises bright and busy Manila, a new world in what was once the island jungle of the Philippines. Named for King Philip of Spain in 1521, the new republic has 24 million people, two and a half million in Manila. Mostly Christian, they are fun-loving, optimistic, loyal, sentimental, and socially gracious. The destruction of Manila in World War II led to a far greater city. Now the bustling metropolis hums with the vibrating tempo of progress. One reason, some visitors say, is the oriental melting pot here, the mixing of ingenuity and ambition. There's an example of real enterprise. Filipinos with aspirations to get somewhere turned their war surplus jeeps into what they call jeepneys, so everybody can get somewhere. The Filipinos need few reminders of the past. The future is their concern as they push the ruins aside to make way for a brand new country. You're not here long before you believe in the miracle of Manila, for it was almost completely leveled by war. Today, it is a show window of democracy, for freedom is a hallowed tradition among the leaders of the Philippines. A fascinating side trip is to nearby Baguio, where the National Military Academy trains leaders to help guard their newly founded republic. A territory of the United States for nearly 50 years, the Philippines Academy is fashioned after America's West Point. The spirit of liberty is also apparent on the tiny isle of Corregidor. In World War II, Filipinos and Americans fought side by side from this famous fortress for five long, heartbreaking months. Almost totally destroyed, the island is a national shrine now and the awesome scars of battle are left as they were when the fighting stopped. Standing among these wounds that still gape and ache with memory, the visitor experiences a rare illusion of living through a great moment in history. Another excursion off the beaten path is a visit to Zamboanga, an old town of Muslim influence where a 17th century Spanish outpost was occupied by the Americans in 1899. Mohammedanism, which was brought here by Arab missionaries in the 14th century, is still predominant, all of which produces a rare setting for a traveler from the New World. The scene at sea is also unique as they sail the gentle waters and bright colored vintas. The Muslim people here are like other Filipinos. Theirs is a different culture. Natural born divers, they can harvest a bountiful crop of shells and coral for their handicrafts, diving 70 feet or more, exploring the finest oyster beds in the Pacific. Formerly notorious for pirating in the Sulu and China seas, their fondness for artistic and colorful things led them to skills with precious metals and stones. Once one of the most warlike people in the world, they never came to terms with any of the occupying nations.
In the village among the fragile huts on stilts, the Muslim women display their artistic talents in fine mat weaving. Here on the other side of the earth from Spain and the Muslim countries, these oriental gypsies show the same characteristics of the old world. The bronze gongs accompany the Islamic folk dance with an Asiatic flair on a stage of fiber mats. In other parts of the islands, you'll delight in watching this folk dance called the tinnikling, named for a long-legged grain-stealing bird who dances about to avoid the farmer's trap. It's a combination dance and sport to keep your toes from getting smacked by the clacking bamboo poles. More footwork is observed in the native sport of SIPA, which the youngsters are practicing, a wicker ball game left over from the old Spanish days. SIPA is the Philippine word for kick. The fundamental shots are easy to master, but the expert's fancy footwork is unique. Scoring is up to 21, like volleyball or ping pong, but that's the last resemblance to any other sport. The champions have a wide repertoire of shots, front, inside, left, or right, outside, left, or right, and the bottom kick that requires eyes in the back of the head. Little Tortoy and his faithful friend, the Carabao, stray from the rice paddies at midday for lunch together, offering camera clickers an opportunity to match the pictures in their old geography books. To see the age-old method of harvesting the staple of the Orient, you don't have to travel far from the cities. This is the technique for threshing the grains from the stalks. In winnowing rice, the wind separates the hulls from the kernels. The kernels fall down and the hulls fly off in the air. Further separating is achieved with a strainer. These picturesque terraces on the uplands of the islands took generations to build, and rice is still the chief crop. A romantic rendezvous is in the midst of the mighty Pag Sanhan Falls. Above the falls, more peaceful pleasures. Downstream, the strong in heart and muscle answer the challenge of the rapids, zigzagging through slippery bottoms and enormous boulders, steering for passageways slightly wider than the canoe. When you don't find the local guides battling the treacherous river, you'll spot them in quieter waters landing fish. They invite you for either sport, casting a line or shooting the rapids. Typifying the country's progress are the modern hotels. 
The appearance is Western, but there is a blending with the East. It is a particularly pleasing mixture in Philippine dishes. A familiar order might be adobo, a combination of chicken, pork, and beef, and a heavy touch of garlic. Or sinigang, stewed lake fish of rare flavor. Or meat with vegetables served with local rice and traditional hospitality. Outside, there is a view which reminds us of their legend, of how a giant threw a great rock into the sea and the 7,000 broken pieces became their nation. Golden islands in the blue Pacific. <laughs> 